Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Nicole and today we are here for a reading vlog so let's get started. Well, good morning or good evening everybody and welcome back to the channel. Thank you for taking some time out of your day and spending it with me while I prattle on about the books that I have read and I do apologize for my attire today. I have just woken up. I'm squeezing this video in because I have my granddaughter here and uh, we have some things planned for today um, so we're going to be going out and doing a few things but um, I have been already out and about with her. We've gone down to the library we've gone out for lunch but it has been pretty slow going for me I had um, some surgery last week which was exploratory and also corrective and um, yeah so they hit me a little bit harder than I expected and I'm so I'm a little bit slow going at the moment but I am feeling a lot better I am moving around a lot easier today um, which is a Thursday the uh, what today is the 6th of April when I'm feeling filming this intro the books that I'm going to talk about in this video are prior to the 6th and then there'll probably be some that'll be after but anyway I will tell you what date I read them and whatnot so my granddaughter doesn't really like me doing a lot of work when I'm he when she's here and so I don't get a chance to film. At the moment she is eating her breakfast, she's engrossed in a cartoon, I think she's watching Bluey, Bl yay for Bluey, and she's having a cup of tea because it's quite cool here this morning. So I thought I'd quickly come out while I've got my cuppa and talk about some of the books that I have read read all right so um the f basically we went out on monday um and we went to the library i'm going to cut to to that sort of footage is there's not a great deal but anyway um and the book that i ended up borrowing a book i never borrow books from the library i just i don't know <laughs> i just don't do it but anyway I borrowed it and I set myself up for borrow box this week as well so i'll be borrowing a lot more um audio books and stuff from um from the library and whatnot but the first book that I'm going to talk about um, after I cut to the uh, footage will be in my dreams I hold a knife hello Bye, Foxy. say hi hi uh, we're going to where we're going today library we are we're gonna go to, to, to yeah yeah we're gonna go and suss out what books we can get so she can read and some books while she's here all right so we're going to go and suss out what books we can get so she can read some books while she's here all right so we are heading to the local library little M is going to pick some books yeah and we're going to uh, read them and i'm going to read them also to the camera for her little channel as well all right so let's head over hold my hand let's head over to the library <laughs> So as you see, we went down to the library. She wanted me to put that in and that's why I had to put it in. She let me film that, that um, she likes to get on camera and all the rest of it. She's such a, such a clown when she gets on camera. But anyway, um, <laughs> um, we went down to the library. She had a great time. She was playing with some of the toys. We got her some books um, and you'll see footage of that and whatnot. Um, I wasn't able to film in there. My town is really funny about filming for some reason. They just don't like it. Like you think in the digital age they would just allow it. Like I'm not filming people. I'm filming books. But anyway, they're a bit funny about it. The, one of the librarians was standing behind the other one that was going, no, you can't do it. Going. <laughs> Like this at me. So anyway, but I got this book. Um, I seen this. This was on there. Uh, new to the library. Um, they have like new books that have come in. Um, not necessarily new releases, but new books to the library. And I seen this, and I, it's been on my radar for a while now. Um, this book, uh, I think it was published in. Uh, uh, let me just have a look. I think it was 2021. This was um, published, and I. 
I'd seen it a couple of times. Like, the cover actually intrigued me more than anything. Yeah, 2021. Um, it's by Ashley Winstead. You can't see that because of the... Um, and you can't even see it on the side because of the, the labels and all the rest of it. My library is cute. They've got these little stickers on it. They never used to have that. They've got these little stickers on it to tell you that, like, it's a thriller. Um, it's a love story and all that sort of stuff. So we've got hearts for romance and all that sort of stuff. I've never noticed that in a library before, so I was quite... And I used to go to the State Library in Brisbane all the time. Um, but, yeah, I've never really paid attention before. And then I've seen all these stickers. I'm like, oh, well, that's cute. <laughs> Putting stickers and pew, pew. It's got little guns on it. But anyway, um, in my dreams, I hold a knife. I don't know what I was expecting with this one. I could not put this down. I actually started this on... Um, Tuesday afternoon, we went down to the library. Um, I started it Tuesday afternoon. I was finished it by nine o'clock that night. I could not put it down. I just, it, the pacing was great. The story was good. The intrigue was w well done. The, um, the twist at the end was well done. I just loved everything about it. It's actually a five star read for me. Um, I loved it that much. Um, I was really surprised by it. I, you know, like I got it because I knew I was going to be sitting in the park. I didn't take any books with me. My phone was going flat. Um, so it, it just ticked all the boxes for me that particular day. Um, and then we come home, we done a few things and then I finished the book off. I think I finished it like at 9 30, 10 o'clock that night. I literally could not put it down. And um, so basically it is following the story of, and oh my gosh, I am terrible with names. I just don't ever write down names. I do not know why. Um, Jessica is her name. So Jessica is telling the story, uh, her story, and basically how um, when they were in college, there was a group of them and one of their friends got murdered, basically. Now, I'm not going to talk too in depth about this book because the simple fact is if I talk about it, I'm going to give it away. <laughs> Um, that. um, so yeah, so basically they were at college, she was at college, there was a, a group of them, um, their friend Heather was murdered and so this story is from the now, from now and also flashing back to then, so you've got the two timelines and basically it's going back to each of the people that were, the, the, I think there was the, they called themselves the East House Seven. And basically it's, uh, well, Heather was gone, so there's six of them. One of them was accused of her murder and basically it ruined his life. He didn't go to this reunion. And so um, Heather's brother comes into it and he's basically questioning them and he wants to find out who killed Heather because her murder is still unsolved. And so we are going backwards and forwards from the now at the reunion to then another um, character and finding out what happened that night and what secrets they had and all that sort of stuff. So they had secrets that were being revealed and all that sort of stuff. So there were secrets, lies, intrigue, the whole lot. Five stars from me. If you haven't read this book I highly and you like um, psychological thrillers, I highly recommend you pick this book up and give it a read you will not be able to put it down all right Okay, so I have read quite a number of books um, this uh, already in April. The next one that I um, read, or actually started this before I started this one, this one was on audio, um, and uh, this was The Atlas Paradox. Now, I really love The Atlas Six, and I started read like I read that, and then I picked this up and then realized it was a bingo prompt. So this was the last one that we had for round one um, and so I picked this up and I started reading it and I've got this on audiobook so I was listening to this mostly um, and I, I listened to this on the way down to Brisbane so I actually started reading this prior to um, prior to picking up um, this book here and so um, 
yeah, I didn't really like this as much. Like, it was still okay. Um, I think I gave Alice 6 four stars. This one I've only really given a three stars. It is definitely suffering from middle book syndrome in a trilogy. So you, it's just still setting up. Like, it's setting up for the climax, climax and all that sort of stuff. So we're still following the Atlas 6 because... Um, well, not the Atlas 6. There was five left. So um, at the end of the, the first book, one of them as the book suggests, only five will survive. So you pretty much know that some, one of them's going to get bumped off. I'm not going to tell you who that is. But anyway, um, they're all trying to piece it all together and there's little bits and pieces that are coming into it that are completing some of the stories from the first one. Again, I can't really talk too much about it. I didn't enjoy this one as much. I'm hoping... I'm, I'm going to continue on with the series. I've just got to wait for the third book to be released. I think it's later this year or maybe early next year. Um, so that's maybe by then I might be a little bit more okay with it. There's nothing really memorable in this book. Um, it's just basically following on from the first one and just filling in some of the blanks, like um, some of the characters that were in the first one that they didn't really cover that much, um, like Gideon. Um, they talk a little bit more about him in this one. And they're just sort of trying to figure out to, um, what happened to the one that um, didn't make it through the first one. So, um, yeah, so basically, but I haven't told you who it is. So it's it's a spoiler, but it's not a spoiler because you already know from the cover that six go in, only five will come and five will survive. So you already know that someone's going to get bumped off just from the cover. But, yeah, this one, um, and we're learning more about Atlas as well and... Um, and Dalton as well. Dalton? Yeah, Dalton as well. So we're learning, and, and Ezra is another one that we're learning about as well. So they were in the society in previous years, and Atlas is the one that's, like, running the show at the moment. So we learn a lot more about them. I found it a little bit dull. Um, it's a YA, so a YA book, and I do struggle sometimes with YAs, but I really enjoyed the Atlas 6. The first one I really enjoyed. This one's definitely suffering from middle book syndrome um, in a trilogy, and so I'm hoping, and I'm hoping, really hoping, that um, the third book just is the best climax book ever. So I have to wait for it, though. But, yeah, three stars from me for the Atlas Paradox. Um, yeah, it was a bit different. All right, so um, we went, to, as I said, we went down to the park and uh, we'd done a little bit of playing and uh, we went out for lunch, but she didn't want me to film lunch. So <laughs> anyway, it is what it is. All right. Okay, so the next book that I read is Counted Corpse. This one is by ACF Bookins. This is a series that I am reading with my craft group over on Facebook, but we also have it happening on our Discord as well. So if you want to join in the fun, you can. It is Cozy Mystery, of course. Um, this one is uh, centered around a church, uh, an ancient uh, Indian burial ground, and also um, touches on... Um, slavery and family trees from that so this one was a little bit different where we didn't have a body this time so basically she I think they were knocking down a house that was on church grounds um, yes so she um, discovers they her and her friend discover a heap of journals and um, basically uh, it was from the um, pastor's wife and she was keeping journals about things that were happening in the area and all that sort of stuff and family trees and all, all that sort of stuff so um, yeah so they found this journal and they were reading through it and it abruptly ended with no further entries or anything like that it turned out that was the day that she died um, and she was going to the church elders to say hey this is the situation that we think there's a burial ground there um, and all that sort of stuff it also touched on slave owners um, how one particular slave owner was actually gave a lot of money and land to a, um, a, a slave and then there was documentation of people being bought um, and then a baby being sent back and then it was 
and that was to show how all the family trees were intersecting and all that sort of stuff. And the pastor's wife um, was actually documenting who was who for future generations and stuff like that. Um, and it just, it was really more centered, not so much around the murder. Like they were trying to find out what happened to the pastor's wife. And for the life of me, I can't remember her name. Um, but I'm sure you understand that now that you've been here for a while, you know that I always forget names. But anyway, um, they were trying to figure out what happened to her because her abrupt, um, like no more entries after this date. They had worked out that she had died that day. They had worked out who reported the, the death. Um, they just didn't know what happened to her and whatnot. So that was the, the, the start of the story. And then it just had these other branches that went off. So it touched, it touched on how this, um, there was a Indian burial ground and how the chief came in and they established that it definitely wasn't Indian burial ground. And then, as I said, it moved on to, um, slave owners giving slaves money and land and the why they were doing it and how this particular slave and his family family ended up owning a lot of land in that particular area um and it was a like a substantial amount and that it was just all these diary entries were leading them on little um paths and whatnot and of course there was an integral uh character in the book that wanted these secrets to remain secret because of the shame the stigma of shame and all that sort of stuff so it was only lightly touched on it but it was uh in my opinion it was okay it was well done i don't know enough about that history um and and all that sort of stuff to say whether it was well done or not that would be entirely up to someone else to do that but i enjoyed the story i enjoyed how um the ancient burial ground about the indian burial ground was touched on i i enjoyed how they um wanted to honor their ancestors on the slavery side of things um you know and just to to acknowledge their existence and all that sort of stuff and so for a cozy mystery take it for what it is um um it was good I, I enjoyed it it was a little bit different than the other ones like the other three this is fourth in the in the book uh series so the other three we always had a body and she was working together with the police again she was working with the police but he wasn't a set in integral part of this book um and it was a little bit like it didn't get straight into like the other ones, you, you knew what was coming, essentially. As soon as you opened the book, you knew what was coming. This one, it just took a little bit of a turn, which was great. I, I liked that it um, it touched on these subjects. I've given it four stars, um, and I enjoyed it. So, and hopefully you will too. And if you want to join us, the Discord information is down below. You can come and join us if you like. <music>
in Atlanta, I think it was, and then um, they get together with a hot and heavy scene and early on in the book, and then she just like leaves and doesn't contact him again. Subsequently, he ends up in New Orleans where they are because of Mateo, and um, this is now two years later after her pushing him away and all that sort of stuff, they're opening up a tattoo shop and um, she is helping Supernaturals by uh, putting incantations or spells into uh, the tattoo ink and it's um, she's trying to help him to have more control over his shifting and whatnot. And subsequently there is a bit of a story, backstory, it's not just hot and heavy spicy, there is a story about the Blood Moon Pack uh, some of them come to town. There is a situation with Violet and that plays out. Um, I gave this one a four-star read. There are many laugh-out-loud moments. Um, the reason that I rated it down by one star, towards the end of the book, there was probably... Um, I didn't get bored with it, don't get me wrong. I didn't get bored with it and I loved how it was tied up. I just think we could have lost a couple of chapters at the back and back end of the book, but that's just my personal opinion. Um, and I have a sneaking suspicion that was because Mia was kept coming in and talking to me and she was supposed to be going to bed and she kept getting out of bed and I was getting frustrated. So it possibly could have been a me thing and not a book thing. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so for take that for what it is. But if you like a little bit of spice and a little bit of um, humour, Juliet Cross hits the mark on all of... Um, all of the points. I absolutely love this series. As I said, I read the first one and I fell in love with that book and I immediately bought all the books that were available, in including her anthology that she's got, which is called uh, Walking in a Witch Witchy Wonderland. It is a Christmas one, which is to be, re it came out after this one because I'm reading them in chronological order. Um, and book six is about to be released in May and I've pre-ordered that. So I'm super excited about that as well. So if you have not read these, as I said, these are all available over on Kindle Unlimited so, so if you've got Kindle Unlimited you can read them without a problem um, yeah but if if you do like them I suggest buying the books because they're so pretty <laughs> as well but that's Witches Get Stitches
All right, so the next one that I read is The Shadow Man, and I start. I, I pretty much finished this and picked up this. Um, I finished this yesterday, which was Wednesday the 5th of um, April. I, again, I sat. There, I read this in one sitting. I must be in the mood for um, romance and thrillers at the moment, and I'm alternating them. So basically, uh, this is following the story of Fergus. He is a creepy ass dude, <laughs> like, and he um, has kidnapped. It start. The opening scene was pretty horrific. Um, like it actually, I just went whoa. <laughs> um. Not it was a little bit graphic, but not super graphic. So let me just paint you a picture, okay? This is the in the the opening scene is he is watching someone. Her family have gone off for a weekend away. She's decided to stay at home. She's having a bath. He's locking the doors and all the rest of it, and and it sort of just lulls you in a little bit. And um, so she's having a bath. He's sitting there listening, all this sort of stuff. And he's just she doesn't know he's there. He's just sort of in the shadows and all the rest of it. She gets into bed, and then he basically um. He must whisper something in. I, um, I think he whispers something in her ear. I think I missed that. Um, I just that details just slipped my mind because it just took a turn after that. So he had a handkerchief with chloroform, but he put his hand over her mouth, and she freaked out basically, as you would, and she bit a big chunk out of his finger, and. <laughs> And she smacked him. Um, so DNA evidence, basically. But anyway, he ended up accidentally killing her. So his MO is he um, believes he's dying, that there, there's nothing that can be done, and he has to have the perfect family. That's the premise um, before he can pass over. So he is essentially, he ends up kidnapping three people and, um, uh, a girl, a lady, and he forces her into a marriage. Like, it's not an actual marriage, but, like, plays it out. Um, and then he kidnaps a young girl to be his daughter, and then he kidnaps a young man to be his um, brother. And essentially he has them um, locked up, and they've try they're going to try to escape. But... If you have not read this, this is this is Helen Field's first standalone novel, and it's from 2021, I believe. This one was. Um, let me just have a look. So she wrote the perfect series, so Perfect Remains, Perfect Prey, Death, Silence, Crime, and Kill, um, and then this one is her standalone one, and I think it was her first standalone one. I'm just trying to find the date. Yeah, 2021. Subsequently, she has um, got a couple of other books that I'm looking at as well, which I believe are standalone. Um, but the character from this one is actually um, is in another book as well. And she's a profiler. and we're, So she's come from the United States to the UK. And then we've also got <clears throat> a police officer that's working alongside her. Um, and he's got a, you know is a wife that's having an affair on him and all that sort of stuff. So they're happy to see the back of him and, and end up in, in this particular town. So Fergus has kidnapped these people and the, the rush is on to find them before it's too late. But the things that happen in this book are out there. Yeah. So this book kept me on the edge of my seat and I'm really glad that I picked it up. This again is an Aurelium, um, read I had to read a book with flowers on the cover and so oh, I was pretty happy that I picked this up this had um yeah this was for elemental studies I just was bringing up um what I had it for so um yeah I was really excited to read this book as the book was going on I was just getting more and more engrossed in the book um Mia was doing all sorts of arts and crafts and stuff like that so I was um just sitting there reading while she was doing that um yeah, absolutely loved it. There's so many things that happen in this book that you just like, they don't turn your stomach, but you just go, oh. 
<laughs> and even some of the things that happen to um, Connie. Connie is the main uh, character in, in this. She's the profiler, and she cannot see in color, so she only sees in black and white. She had a head trauma when she was younger, and it caused her not to be able to see in color and stuff like that. So, it's a very interesting take on it and how she works around that. And um, there wasn't a lot touched on in that but just enough just to go wow that's that's interesting and um and that's sort of how she ends up connecting with um Fergus and whatnot and we know about Fergus from the get-go we know his his backstory and all that sort of stuff we learn about that very much early in the book in the first couple of chapters so yeah um the shadow man <laughs> is um a scary ass book <laughs> And I think if you like a good psychological thriller, you're going to absolutely love this book. I have given it a four and a half star rating. Absolutely loved it. Um, highly recommend it. If you've not read anything by Helen Fields, start with this one. I don't know anything about her other ones, but start with this one. It's a standalone, so you're not going to get involved in a series. But that are they are all the books that I have read thus far. The next book that I am reading is I'm Glad My Mum Died um, by Jeanette Mer I can't think of her name but anyway um yeah so that's the next one that I'm going to be reading I have also started the next 10 chapters in The Count of Monte Cristo this is getting very very good absolutely loving it I have caught up for April um for March and April so I am now up to page uh, 66 so I don't have to pick this up again until next May until uh, not next May, till next month. Um, so that's good. And I have um, two other library books that I borrowed as well that I will talk about on the channel in the next week or so. And I am about to start volume three of Middle March for the Serialized Book Club. But that is it from me today. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. And as always, keep turning those pages and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.